Good evening, everyone. Welcome to day five of our 10 days of prayer. We are so happy that so many of you have chosen to join us this evening at the church. We truly appreciate you made the effort. We do appreciate those watching online. Everyone here, please make sure that you have a copy of our study guide this evening so that you can follow along with us. And, there's, and also there's a notebook prayer. Add, write down your prayer request so that when it comes time for the intercessory prayer, that your prayer will be included. Those of you online, we pray that we ask you that to download a copy from the church's website, which is alwaysburysdachurch.org. Alwaysburysdachurch, one word, dot org. And you can, uh, we invite you also to post your prayer request so that your prayer request will be included in the intercessory prayer. Please stand for our opening song number 487. 487. In the garden. Please stand. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and with voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, how good and pleasant it is for God's people to dwell together in unity. Amen. 
Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that has been offered to us tonight to come together in your house of prayer. We've come, Lord, to seek your presence. We've come to worship you. We've come to praise your name. We've come to tell of your great goodness, your goodness toward each and every one of us. Lord, as we gather here tonight, we want to confess our sins because we know that we have done wrong. We ask that you please cleanse us from all sins and all unrighteousness. And we pray that you will pour your spirit in every heart, the hearts of everyone that are here in the sanctuary and those online. Lord, we pray that you will bless Sister Ella as uh, she shares the word that has been uh, given to us during this 10 day of prayer, especially for tonight, the, the word that she will share with us. Lord, we pray that you will open our hearts, give us understanding, give us wisdom, and help us to receive this word, not only to receive it, but apply it in our lives. Help us to rebuild the altars that have been broken in our homes, in our church, and wherever we are. Lord, please bless us, guide us, and lead us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to listen to Sister Ella, who's going to share the word with us. As you know, our theme this year is Back to the Altar, Early Will I Seek Thee. The title of the devotional this evening is Jesus, the Early Wiser. Jesus, the Early Wiser. I'm so happy you're here this evening. Your wife told me that you weren't feeling well, so I'm glad you're here. Our meditation text is found in John 4, verse 23. John chapter 4, verse 23. John 4, verse 23. I'll read for you. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. This evening, we will cover two topics, the altar truth and early seekers wanted. We'll start with the altar truth. There is an altar truth in the life of Jesus that no Christian should miss. During the past few days, we have reflected much on altars in scripture and on the lives of those who built them. The altar is a metaphor for a place and time of worship to the true and living God. One need not possess a physical altar in order to worship God. In fact, if a follower of Jesus lives in consistent, earnest, Bible-based communion with God, he or she has already erected an altar as well as the one that Elijah rebuilt on Mount Carmel. We see this in 1 Kings chapter 18. The most precious altar we can offer to God is to open our hearts to him, to focus on God, to consecrate ourselves to God, and to develop holy habits. That's how we reflect God's character. We see such an altar in the life of Jesus because Jesus was one with God. Amid a busy life of daily ministry, constant threats from his enemies and withering assaults from the devil, Jesus made time for long seasons of prayer and worship. Did you hear what I said? Jesus made time for long seasons of prayer and worship. If Jesus was God, made time for long seasons of prayer and worship, more reason that sinful beings like us need to spend more time with God in prayer. Jesus was equal with the Father. We see that in Philippians 2 verse 6. Jesus still taught it 
important to be still and know that God is God. Psalm 46.10. Jesus understood from an early age that his calling required constant connection with his Father. What was Jesus calling? To come on earth to save us from humanity, to save humanity from sin, right? This was the only way to carry the sins of the world to the cross. Jesus felt that he has to stay in connection with God, the Father, to have the power and the wisdom to withstand Satan's temptations and also to carry the sins of the world to the cross. So here we see the power of sin. Sin is powerful because it separates us from God. Sin is destructive because it brings death into to humanity. So Jesus had to pray his father to succeed in his mission. So as sinful beings, which mean we are imperfect beings, we need to stay connected with the Father through prayer. Now, early seekers wanted. In Mark 1, verse 35, Jesus was a long while before daylight and found a quiet, solitary place to talk and listen to his Father. So we see that Jesus was early in the morning to talk and listen to the Father. So as we have a relationship, there must be conversation. We talk to God through prayer, but we need to listen to him. And since God is spirit, we don't have a physical body in front of us, so we need to learn to hear from him and learn about him through he the Holy Scriptures. So we need to spend, not only spend time in prayer with God, but we need to spend time reading and studying his word. The previous day had been spent full on ministry. Jesus was busy with ministry. He was healing the sick. He was healing the sick, casting out demons and redeeming the lost. When the disciples awoke, they noticed Jesus was gone and went in search of him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you, Mark 1.37. Jesus' answer is a powerful reminder of the blessing that awaits all who tend their morning and evening altar. Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. Because for this purpose I have come forth, Jesus remarked, in Mark 1, verse 38. Did you get that? Jesus was faced with a powerful dilemma. Stay in the place where he was, Peter's home, and continue fruitful ministry there, or leave that place for new, untested ministry territories. Few Christians today will give up a fertile ministry moment for an unknown one. Yet Jesus did exactly that with no hesitation. How did he make the right decision? God the Father had revealed the plans for that day to Jesus during his private devotional time. The Father affirmed Jesus' purpose as he prayed and waited in his presence. That's the reason we need to spend time in prayer. We can pray to God all day long, but early in the morning is very special. Why? Because we want to recommend our lives, recommend our lives into God's hand early in the morning so that it's not our will that we do, but his will. We are created in God's image, in God's likeness, and for his glory. The only way we can bring glory to God is by fulfilling his purpose. And how can we fulfill his purpose if we are not connected with him? Sin separated from God. In order to be connected to God, we need prayer. We need to seek him in prayer earnestly, day in, day out, all day long, but most importantly, early in the morning so that 
it is the, he's the one who guides our words, our actions, so that we can reflect the divine character of Jesus to all those we come in contact with. We don't have to say we are Christians. They should see Jesus in us and know that we are Christians. The Father affirmed Jesus' purpose as he prayed and waited in his presence. Many times, as Christians, we make our prayer request, but because we are so influenced by society, by our sinful world, sometimes we ask the wrong things, and then we say, we complain, oh, God is slow in answering my prayer. No, God is not slow. We have asked the wrong thing. But if we seek him in prayer early in the morning and ask for his will to be done in our lives throughout the day, we will ask the right thing. Things that will fulfill his purpose and bring glory to his name. Friends, brothers and sisters, when we fail to seek God early in worship and prayer, we miss God's plans for our day and his affirmation for our purpose. Today, let us pray for the commitment to rise early. Spend time with God that he might ready us to fulfill his purpose for our day and for our lives. We need to take personal time with God, one-on-one -on -one, to speak with God. We need to pray with our spouses so that God will be the foundation of our union, of your union, and at the center of your union. But we also have devotional time with the family, with kids, with the kids, because how can they learn to pray to God if they don't see their parents praying to God? So spend time, one-on-one -on -one time with God, pray with your spouses, and pray with your children. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now we'll be singing number 539 before we proceed. 539. Yeah. 
Now we're going to move on to a season of prayer where I am inviting you to stand with me and we're going to read the three prayers that are listed on the back of your sheet. Please stand. Let's pray, God, to help us be true worshipers. Let's read together. Father, teach us in our everyday activities, in both the important and the mundane aspects of our lives, how to worship you. May we no more compartmentalize our faith. May we no more think of worship as only a Sabbath event but truly see it as the happiest way of life. May we be continually connected to you and live as true worshipers of the only true God. Amen. Now, let's pray God to help us worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's read together. Thank you, God, that we can worship you from whenever, wherever we are and whenever we want to. You hear us whether we are at home, at work, at church, or traveling. We give you praise for this 24-7 availability to your children. Lord, guide us into all truth through your Holy Spirit so that our worship, yes, our lives, will be in harmony with all truth. Thank you, God, for leading us into a true worship experience. Amen. Let's pray God to answer his call as he is seeking, seeking us. Let's read together. Gracious Father, your love for us is beyond comprehension. You desire us to be close to you. You actively seek us and are so eager to become everything to us. Forgive us when we have ignored you and not spent much or any daily time with you. We know you don't force yourself upon us. Thank you for the assurance that if we invite you to commune with us, you will be among us. Amen. 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 You may sit down. Today, reading in inspire us to pray continually to God. So we're going to continue with prayer. We're going to have another prayer, series of prayer. Before that, we're going to start with one stanza of number 290, 290. After we sing the first stanza, leave it open. We we're, going to ha we're going to ask someone, a volunteer from the congregation, to say a prayer of thanksgiving and praise to God. Praise God for who he is in our lives, in the universe, and thank him for what he has done in our lives. We will sing the first stanza of 290 and sing it as a prayer to God. Let us bow down our heads in prayer. Our Lord God Almighty, Abba Father, 
This moment, Lord God, we come to praise and give thanks to your name because you are worthy to be praised, to be honored, to be worshiped. Thank you, Lord God, that we have this privilege of prayer. Thank you for the freedom that we have. We could come before your holy presence whenever, wherever we are. Thank you, Lord God, for loving us unconditionally. We are unworthy of your love and forgiveness because of our sinfulness, because of our filthiness. We are like filthy rags, but you love us just the same. Thank you, Lord God, for emptying heaven for us, for our salvation. Sending your son, Jesus Christ, that every one of us will come to know you, will come into repentance and be with you in that heavenly place where you have prepared for us. So Lord God, may our hearts, may our minds be lifted up to you, to your altar where we could have an encounter with you and have a renewed life every day. May we seek you early part of the day and you will pour your blessings into our lives. May it be physical, mental, emotional, with our relationship with one another, but above all, Lord God, with our relationship with you. We praise you again for whatever you have given us, for whoever you are, our sovereign father, our friend and the coming king. This we pray in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And now we spend a minute of prayer of confession. We all have, we are all sinners. We have all have fallen short of the glory. We all are falling short of God's glory. So let's spend one minute in prayer of confession. Silent prayer. Amen. Now we will ask someone to volunteer to pray for our local church and our world church. A short prayer. To pray for our local church and our world. Let us pray for our local church and <laughs> world church. We will want a volunteer. We need a volunteer to say a short prayer for our local church and our world church. Elder David, thank you. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together as a church family. And now, dear Lord, we come with a special purpose. We want to lift this local church up before your throne of grace. We ask, dear Lord, that you bless each and every member, whether they be watching online, whether they be gathered here today, or whether they could not make it, Lord, we pray for their safety and their upkeep. We thank you, Father, for the World Church. We pray, Lord, for all of its leaders. We ask, dear Lord, for a special blessing of the Holy Spirit upon their minds. Continue, Lord, to help them, give them the wisdom Give them the ability, Lord, to lead the world church. We pray, Father, that your spirit will always abide with us. We thank you because we know you hear and answer all of our prayers because we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And now to introduce Sister Ruth in the intercessory prayer. 
because we know that we have many requests online as well as in here at the church. We're gonna sing the second stanza of 290, 290, turn your eyes upon Jesus. everyone. To those of us who are here and those who are online, we welcome you to our fifth day. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. Amen. Sister White gives us admonition, as we read earlier, to consecrate ourselves to God in the morning making it a very first work. She says, Take me, our prayer must be, Take me, O Lord, as holy thine, I lay all my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me, and let all thy wor my work be wrought in thee. This is a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. Surrender all your plans to him to be carried out or given up as his providence shall indicate. Thus, day by day, you may be given your life into the hands of God, and thus your life will be molded more and more after the life of Christ. Let's all kneel where whoever can. Oh, yeah, a couple of okay. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, Janice is asking, please continue to pray for Dave, who is hospitalized and for strength for his wife, Pat. She also is asking to uh, pray for her husband, Juan. God knows his uh, needs. And I'd like to pray for all the ministries in our church that will be starting uh, fresh and new this year. Do we have any other prayer requests that did not get into the prayer journal that would like to be added? Anybody here? If you just raise your hand, we have a mic for you. Yeah, we got. Okay, let's kneel where we can, please. We thank you, Lord, for guiding and protecting us each and every day. You are our only way of truth and our life. We're not worthy, Lord, to come before you. Thank you. We're sinful. There's none good in us, no, not one. But we thank you for the opportunity where we can come here, where we can bow our knees 
and we can give thanks to you for guiding and protecting us through every day of our life. We thank you, Lord, for all the good things you have given unto us. You promise, Lord, that, you, uh, that we, all we need to do is to ask. You promise, Lord, that we need to ask and you shall give us. And how much more you will give us the Holy Spirit to those who ask. And so tonight, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to come divinely close to us and bless us. You promise, Lord, that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, that you are in the midst of us. And we know, there, Father, that you're here tonight. And like you were with the disciples of old, Lord, as they met in the upper room, we ask you there, Father, that your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bring us, Lord, into our hearts into harmony with you. Help, dear Father, that this uh, ten days of prayer may not go down in the history books as one that just passes by and leaves us without you, but that each day we may uh, consecrate ourselves to you, that we may build back those family altars in our homes, that, dear Father, that you may be the one that guide us day by day, that we may surrender all our plans to you every day, and knowing that you know what's best for us, and that you will either allow or prevent, and that help us, dear Father, that whatever happens, that we may praise you and give you the honor that's due to your name. We thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you have given to us. We know, dear Father, that sometimes you withhold things from us because you know what's, in the, what's good and what's not good. And sometimes, Lord, we can't understand. But we know, dear Father, that you are too good and too kind to withhold things that are good for us. And only when we get to heaven, we will know the length and breadth and height and depth of your love. How much you cared for us, how much you prevented, how much you allowed. Only then we will know who you really and truly are. And we'll be able to stand with the, among the, the throngs and say, Hosanna and praise be to our God because you are a redeemer, you are a creator, you are a sustainer, and most of all, you are our friend. A friend that we can call a brother, a friend that we can reach out to at any time of day or night, a friend who sticks closer to her brother, a friend of all friends. And at nights, Lord, when our hearts are in pain, we can reach out to you and know that you are there. We pray, Lord, for those who mourn. I pray, dear Father, my family, as we still mourn the loss of my mom. I pray especially for my dad, Lord, as he's lost his companion of 60 years. I ask, dear Father, that you may continue to be with my brothers and my sister and myself and all the grandkids as we remember the way that mommy has taught us, that we may learn and we may remember and we may press forward in faith. The faith that she's taught us, the faith that keeps us going, the faith that lasts through eternity. We know, dear Father, that you have plans for us, and eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has ordained for those who love him. And even through pain and all the others who have lost loved ones during this year, Lord, we pray for each one. Comfort, Lord, and give us your peace that passes understanding, the peace that comes from above, that no one on this earth knows except they have a relationship with you. And we thank you, Lord, for all your promises, because your promises are sure. They're more than certain, Lord. We know, there, Father, that you are not slack concerning your promises, but you are always faithful. And help us, Lord, in, to know that in your mercy, you allow things to happen. And we thank you and we praise you. Lord, at this time, we bring you before you all the, the prayers for tonight. Tanya is praying for her knee pain, Lord, we present it before you. And Sharon's grandson, who is in the hospital, Lord, may your healing hand touch and heal him. We know, dear Father, that you're still in the business of healing. We know that there's still a bomb in Gilead, and that your, your hands are not short, neither your ears are, are deaf, but that you can reach out and you can touch and heal. And we ask you, dear Father, that you may heal this little boy and bring him back to health. We pray, dear Father, for Josette as she's praying for the family of a uh, pastor. Um, and is Pastor Honoré. We pray, dear Father, for Sister Elizabeth Syriac and her family. We pray for Lisa's daughter, 
Cynthia, as she recovers from surgery, Lord. Jennifer is praying for her immune system and for healing. She's praying that she'll be able to attend church in person, Lord. Please hear her prayer. Rosita is praying for Wendy, Lord. We raise her up before you. We pray there, Father, for the far families that they have a closer walk with God and not be distracted. And another person is praying for a closer walk with God. Pray for the Holy Spirit to dwell with her that, and the family to prepare for his second coming. And Lord, at this time, we bring all our children to who may have strayed far and family and friends. We all have family and friends and uh, loved ones that we would love to see, know and love you, whether they have strayed or whether they have never learned to love you. And we ask you there, Father, that your Holy Spirit, even at this time, make draw near to them. And for the ones who have lost their love for you, Lord, may that love be rekindled. May they, may they remember the way that they walked with you. And we know, there, Father, that intercessory prayer goes a long way. And we pray, there, Father, that as we ascend our prayers to heaven to you, you may hear us, Lord, and answer our prayers. We pray for all the leadership of the church, worldwide and local. We pray for our pastor here and for his family, Lord. We pray for health and well-being for all our family members. Kyle is praying, uh, his nephew is addicted to video games to be released from the satanic stronghold. And Gabby is praying for her daughter for God's leading in her life and healing with broken relationships and restoration. And we're praying, somebody needs a prayer for an important travel. And we're praying, Lord, for Barbara and her family. Please ask for guidance. We're asking for guidance, Lord, as they face health problems and for all of us to trust you more. Oh, Lord, we ask you that you may continue to hear our prayers and answer them. Uh, Janice is praying for Dave, who's hospitalized, and for her husband, and for the ministries of the church. Lord, Tanya is asking for prayer. We pray, their Father, that we, all our friends and family who have uh, learned to we may continue to pray for all our friends and family, Lord, who have strayed and have, that have lost their first love, that they may return to you. And we thank you, Lord, for your blessings, and we thank you for your guidance, and we thank you for everything and everything good that you have given to us. And in these and mercies we ask with thanksgiving in your holy and precious name that your will be done. Amen. 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 Third stanza, 290. Yes, the last stanza. Third stanza of number 290. This word shall not fail. Thank you, Sister Ruth, for this fervent prayer for uplifting our prayers to God. I thank you, Sister Jesse, for being our pianist the past five nights, the past four nights and tonight. I thank you, Joanne, for trusting me totally this evening. I thank you, Mom. I've learned to pray from you, watching you. And I thank all of you, each and every one of you who made the effort to come here. And those watching online, we thank you and invite you to tune in tomorrow evening, 7.30, so that we can continue to seek God together in prayer. Have a blessed evening. Pastor, if you have any announcement, no?
So good night and stay safe.